Hey! What? Right.
explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko! There's no other explanation! But Kyoko's standing right there. No! That's a ghost! But... she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology! There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? I got it! I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh! You know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. Explosion. Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. No, it's wrong. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails. Remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify... No, it's wrong! Well. 
There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Well, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it. To be like, you're my bitch. Seriously? They really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay. So to show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? Presentation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god Loki and a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all star. A wolf tattoo. And that means. Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? Now we have to have a cool last trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... Kyoko got it wrong? Um, who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time? And when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope Speak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this, no matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. 
The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brain! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then, one of us killed Mukuro? <sighs> Did it! Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Narrowed it down to Yoko and me. Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden so I can confirm that at that point there was no dead body there. So the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... ...are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. Um... I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then. Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit. So I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was a... Oh, yeah. Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. Established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock and night. No, it's wrong! Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on. I remember this part perfectly. The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How 
How dare you spew such indecent words! No, he's saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler, you better tell us why! Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. The reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Shut up, you! You got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway, Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So that was her motive? She had a motive and no alibi. Well then, I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. I got it! 
You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Lakoto just gave us. Wait, something's not right. And what might that be? By covering the body with the car, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they'd used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh, yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim? You mean someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office! That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. I got it! Could it have been chicken blood? What? Chicken blood? When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree. That certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing a coat like you normally would? Um, I think so. Wait, no. 
the head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off, but the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they've already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready. So they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? <laughs> That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No, not that. I just remembered something super serious. Well, don't just stand there. Out with it. You know that knife we found all black and burnt? The one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remember! We gave to Makoto? You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I hid it. It's just... Suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced he did it! Well, thousand percent convinced! The knife we found lodged in the dead body. It's the same one we gave to Makoto. It really is, isn't it? I was afraid of that. If he did have that knife before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer? Well, getting stabbed is what killed her. No, it's wrong. Wait, hold on. The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover-up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her! No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp and then put the bloody coat on it, right? In other words, 
the victim never wore that bloodstained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine. So what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and once to cover it up. I got it! The Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. Oh yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. From the knife was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but what's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic-level spontaneous combustion! I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her or we won't make any headway on this. I got it! After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural, because of course, we saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. Oh! Then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Yakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. Shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. Yes. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Then, shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has been... No, it's wrong! Mukuro died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? 
They didn't have anything to do with it? The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. What was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blunt object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it'd cave their skull in completely! Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off! You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power! I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. No thanks. I bet you just hit me with the metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground, and, and spit on it! <laughs> I feel the same way! Looks like we're on the same page this time! Seriously? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master! So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed him. And that something was the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. Arrow? That's what the Cobra attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds... kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. The Titanium Arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too thick. No, it's wrong! You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. One stick is weak, but put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker... It was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh no, you absolutely have. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Uh, oh! Uh, hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. I got it! The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is right here. The key to the dojo lock. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. It was in my room? The 
don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko, I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? And what were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. What? Enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know. those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Hiyakuya, what are you hiding? The Astro would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room. Correct. But, could I really have done that? Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not a killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Kiyakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the core. No, it's wrong! If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Hmm? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Kiyakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand. Kyoko's statement just now. A lie? Isn't that right, Kyoko? 
You said it. The burden of proof is on you. So let's hear it. Where's this lie, then? I didn't have the key to my room because I'd given it to Biakia. There's no doubt about that, right? You are correct. So I couldn't possibly have gotten into my room. Then, when we searched Kyoko's room, how else could the key have gotten there? Someone other than me must have put it there. That's the only explanation. I didn't have the key to my room because I'd given it to Byakuya. There's no doubt about that, right? You are correct. So I couldn't possibly have gotten into my room. No, it's wrong! No, Kyoko could have gotten into her room. You said so yourself, didn't you, Kyoko? Secret tool? Kyoko stole it from the headmaster's room. It lets you get into any room in the school, which means she could have used it to get into her own room. Then I guess that's it. You're giving up just like that? You admit to killing? No, I'm simply recognizing that I lost. Well, what are you talking about? Like I said, this was a trap, and I wasn't able to escape it. So I lost. That's all this means. Huh? Then... Are you saying you really didn't, Kyoko? You really aren't the killer? Okay! Time's up! Huh? I'm sorry to say, but your time is up! All done! All finished! The class trial is all over! But, but that's ridiculous! Since when is there any... It's because you were late! So the trial started late and time ran out! So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you! But I guess we already know who the blackened is, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> now then, I prepared a very special punishment. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. <laughs>
This isn't right! Makoto, why are you staring off into space? Don't you have a rebuttal for Kyoko's claim? Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room. That it was someone else. But who else could it have been? I mean, Viakia had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone, or put the key in Kyoko's room. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. What? It, it had to be Makoto, right? I don't see any other option. Wait a second! You've got it all wrong! Let's think about it one more time! There's got to be a hidden side to this case! Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Lucaro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead. And then we're thrown into a trial! And Kyoko even said it's a trap the Mastermind set for us! So that's why... This has to be... Okay! Time's up! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have we... It's because you were late! So we had to push back the start time! So then, it's time for voting time! Okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you! Voting time? Now, who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Don't expect you to forgive me. I know this is all my fault. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! This is... It would seem... What the heck?! In other words...